Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times with praise ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord who will hear the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. Let the lowly hear and be glad. The Lord listens to their pleas. And to hearts broken, God is near. Who will hear the cry of the poor? The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Blessed be the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist this morning, we pause and we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Kyrie Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hor, the children of Israel set out on the Red Sea Road to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole, and whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the brown serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer and 
let my cry come to you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me. In the day of any distress, incline your ear to me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. O Lord, hear my prayer, let my cry come to you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer, let my cry come to you. Let this be written for the generations to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy heights, from heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let, let my, my cry, cry come, come to you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Father, may I have your blessing. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily and fittingly proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because, he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, You belong to what is below, I belong to to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, What I told you from the beginning, I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. As I read the book of Exodus and the book of Numbers, one thing that impresses me about the Israelites is that they were really good at grumbling. All they ever do is grumble and complain. They did so in Egypt when they were slaves, and we can understand that. They grumbled against Moses when they came to the Red Sea and saw the Egyptian army coming after them. God spread the seas for them. They got across. The Egyptians were destroyed. You'd think that would have convinced them 
that God is on our side, what are we worried about? But the next day they're grumbling and complaining against Moses. Why did you bring us out here in the desert to die of hunger? At least in Egypt we had enough to eat. God sent the manna from heaven. And then a few days later they're complaining, we're getting tired of this food, we want meat. God sends them quails. They eat so many they throw up and get sick. They deserve that. A um, few days later, they're grumbling, complaining, we have no water. Why did you bring us out in the desert to die of thirst? And once again today, we see them grumbling and complaining because of the wretched food they have. And then the serpents begin to bite them, and then they finally realize how selfish they are. They turn to God. And God tells Moses to build a pole and place a brazen serpent upon it. And anyone who will look at it will be saved uh, from the serpent bites. Um, that pose prefigures the cross of Jesus, and he uses the same language, when I am lifted up, then you will know that I am. In other words, that I am God's son. Uh, and yet in many ways, aren't we like the Israelites too? When everything is going well, we have confidence that we're taking care of things, everything's doing our, we're doing it all, uh, we get all the credit, and who needs God? So he's kind of an afterthought. We're too busy taking care of ourselves. But suddenly, when disaster befalls us, illness in the family or the coronavirus, suddenly we begin to wake up and realize how much we are dependent upon God. And we, we turn to God and we look toward him, and we look to Jesus on the cross, cross and ask him for help and assistance. So in many ways, we're like those blockheaded, grumbling Israelites. Um, we often forget what God has done for us. Especially during this season, the church focuses our attention upon Jesus who has been lifted up on the cross. Often I come over here to church and I gaze at our crucifix. We have one of the most beautiful crucifixes, I think, in the world. I think even Michelangelo would be proud and look with envy and the artist who carved this crucifix for us, we ask the artist to try to capture as much as possible the pain and the anguish that Jesus suffered. And if you look at our crucifix and the corpus on it, you see the, the uh, marks of the scourges, uh, the distended shoulder in his arm, his, uh, his left shoulder, um, the terrible crown of thorns on his face. And if you can look closely at the face, you see nothing but pain and the face of death. In fact, that's exactly the moment we wanted to capture. Jesus has just finished saying, it is finished, and he's bowing his head and dies. One eye is already closed, the other will soon be. We wanted to express the fact that Jesus has died, but our work now continues. And so, every time I come over here and gaze at that crucifix, I try to imagine the horrible suffering that Jesus endured. Um, I can't imagine what it must have been like. Um, and yet how grateful we can be that Jesus died that horrible death on the cross and rose from the dead to make eternal life possible for us. And so often when I'm facing a crisis in my own life or as we are now as a world with the coronavirus, I think to myself, what are we worried about? If God sent his son to suffer and to die on the cross in such a horrible way for us and rose from the dead, why, why do we worry about such things? We will get through this crisis. Sure, it is a worrisome time. Some of you probably are no longer able to go to work every day. Uh, many of you are worried about your businesses failing. I, as a pastor of a parish with an elementary school and supporting the high school, I'm worried about how we're gonna pay the bills. If this continues for two or three months, we'll be looking at something like a deficit of a uh, Five hundred or six hundred thousand dollars this fiscal year. It's a worry. And yet, one day, because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, from our place with him in heaven, we'll look back like St. Paul and we will say, What are we worried about? The trials of this life are nothing compared to the glory that God has revealed. So think about that, reflect upon that, look at the crucifix, and thank Jesus for doing what he did for us. I tell the children in grade school day after day when they come to daily mass, we come here for two reasons. We come here to remember what God has done for us 
and to give him thanks. Remember today that Jesus suffered and died on the cross for us to make eternal life possible for you. And then try, as he always did to the Father, he was always pleasing to the Father in heaven, try to live this day in such a way that you too will be pleasing in the sight of the Lord. So with that in mind, let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, out of love for us, you sent your Son, Jesus, to be our Savior. Through his death on the cross and glorious resurrection, we have the hope and promise of eternal life. And so we come to you with confidence this morning and humbly ask you to grant us these favors and petitions. We pray for the church throughout the world, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop George Joseph, for Christian people everywhere, that we may grow in our love for the Lord and share the love with one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people throughout the world who are worried about the coronavirus, uh, that they will turn to the Lord in prayer and ask him for help and assistance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for scientists and doctors of the medical staff that they will uh, find a, um, a cure for this disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, the priests throughout the world. We pray for peace in our homes and community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died from the coronavirus and all who have died recently, that they may share in Christ's risen glory in his kingdom in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those for whom we offer this Mass today, and we pray for the donor who makes this Mass possible throughout the state of Nebraska. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of our unspoken needs and intentions, we pause and pray to the Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our divine physician, we ask you to guard and protect us from the coronavirus and all serious illness. For all who have died from it, have mercy. For those who are ill now, bring them healing. For those searching for a remedy, enlighten them. For medical caregivers, helping the sick, strengthen and shield them. For those working to contain the spread, grant them the success. For those afraid, grant peace. May your precious blood be our defense and salvation. By your grace, may we turn the evil of disease into moments of consolation and hope. May we always fear the contagion of sin more than any physical illness. We abandon ourselves to your infinite mercy, Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Be God, God, to share the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our community. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, we may both pardon our offenses, and you may pardon our offenses and direct our wa wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through Jesus Christ our Lord. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for the conciliation. Even more by your Spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to one another, adversaries may join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought of us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at table, Jesus himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on the same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep, may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and George our Bishop and all the bishops 
and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, be done on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace. Andrew. Peace, Dick. Peace, Dick. Peace to all of you. Peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the, the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, roof but, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me in making a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. When I am lifted from the earth, I will draw all to myself, says the Lord. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that if ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. O God, who chose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord by your works. Thanks be to God. Because God the Son became man and suffered and died on the cross for us and rose from the dead, giving the hope of eternal life, we have cause to rejoice. And so we sing. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, Fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee. The center of unbroken praise. Hill and forest, field and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting herds and flowing fountains, call us to rejoice in 